This video is about correlation. I guess that you've already heard that word and you might have even used that word. But what is correlation and how does it look like? Well, correlation is basically another word for relationship. So almost always when we want to know whether there's a relationship between two numerical variables, what we do is we print a scatter plot. Um, a scatter plot has two dimensions. So the first dimension, x and y. Okay, so a scatter plot has two dimensions, x and y. Um, every dimension labels one variable. So if you have a response, an explanatory variable, you'd put the explanatory variable on x. Um, so x for explanatory, it's a great way to remember this. And the response variable on y. But let's keep that aside for a minute. So now you might um, simply go ahead and uh, put in a dot for every observation. Let's take a simple example. Um, we have a survey of every country in the world in a certain year and we want to know whether there's a relationship between the volume of trade in U uh, with, the United with the United States in dollars and the GDP in dollars. And this data again is completely made up. So the first thing we do is, as always, we draw our table. So you have a table with the country's name, the name, the volume of trade, let's say in million dollars and you have the GDP in let's say billion dollars. Okay, so you have your countries, for example, I don't know, Nicaragua, uh, Brazil, Brazil, and let's say you have Denmark, uh, Denmark, and all the way down to the last country. So this is like, um, I don't know how many countries are in the world, 200 and something um, um, observations. So every country in the world except the United States. Um, okay, then you put in your numbers for trade. So trade with the United States in million dollars. So let's say Nicaragua, I don't know, let's say 22, 22 million dollars. Brazil, 1,400 for example. And Denmark, let's say 800. GDP also, you put in the the numbers for their GDP, okay? So, um, if you've done that, uh, you'd simply go ahead and put in a dot for every observation. So you have two dimensions and every dimension represents one variable. So X could uh, represent the GDP, for example, of a country. So you would scale this, you put in um, the highest uh, the highest uh, GDP would be here and this might be zero and you'd put in the trade volume with the United States in million dollars. This could be um, something like the highest trade volume. This would again be zero. Um, and then you put in a dot for every observation. So let's take Nicaragua for example. It has a very low trade volume with the United States. So maybe the trade volume would be something around here. So that this is this would be the trade volume. So why is the trade volume um, of Nicaragua? And then we check for the GDP. And again, Nicaragua is a small country, so small trade volume and small GDP. So Nicaragua would be right around here. So let's put in a red dot for Nicaragua. Well, the same. You could do the same for Brazil. Brazil is a very large country, so its GDP would be let's say about here, and it has a high volume of trade with the United States. So this would be here. And again, you simply put a dot in for Brazil. And the dot would be right around here. So, and the same goes for every other country. So you, we would have a lot of dots in here, 200 and something dots. I will not draw every single dot. I will just put in some dots so you get the idea of how your data might look like. Okay, so it might look something like this. Okay, so uh, let's imagine this would be uh, 200 and something dots. And um, you have put in the data for every single country. Okay, now, do you see a relationship? Well, I do. Um, it seems that there's a relationship that the higher the country's GDP, so the higher X goes, the higher goes the trade or the bigger is the trade volume, the higher x goes the bigger y goes okay so there is a direct positive relationship well if you think about it it makes a lot of sense the more you produce so the higher your gdp is the more you produce the more you trade so the the higher your uh, your trade volume goes the, the bigger y so you have a bigger y value for a bigger x value 
Um, relationships can be represented in different shapes. So let me get some uh, scatter plots right here for you. Okay, so some more scatter plots. Again, X and Y. X and Y. X and Y. X and Y. Um, the same goes right here. X and Y. And X and Y. Okay, so um, you could have a very strong positive relationship. So very strong relationship. So plus, plus, plus. And your relationship is positive. So for example, it might look something like this. The bigger X, the bigger Y. Okay, you see a very strong positive relationship. Positive because um, the higher one variable gets, the higher the other variable gets. And you could also have a very strong, again, a very strong but negative relationship. So it might look something like this. The bigger x gets, the smaller y you, you, you'll get. Okay, so this is a strong negative relationship. You have one huge var variable and one very small variable. Um, you could also have a, let's say, medium-sized relationship. Again, the po oh, by the way, this is negative. A positive, for example, might look something like this. Okay, so you still have a relationship, but it's not so narrow as in our other example. So it might look something like this. Or again, for the negative relationship, it might look something like this. Okay, so this is a medium-sized positive relationship and this is a medium-sized negative relationship. You could also have a very weak relationship. This might look something like this. Okay, so again you have a positive relationship but it's very weak and the same goes for the, um, let's expand our scatter plot right here, and the same goes for Ah, this, this looks like almost no relationship at all. So let me get another scatter plot. So the same goes for the negative. Okay, so your very weak negative relationship might look something like this. Okay, so these are all sorts of relationships. And um, you could also have no correlation, no correlation at all. So would look something like this. So again, your X and Y axis, and you would have absolutely no pattern in your data. Okay, so they're scattered across your scatter plot. So this is absolutely no relationship um, right here between X and Y, two variables, and um, there is no relationship. So the weaker your pattern gets, the weaker your correlation gets. These scatter plots are a great way to uh, look for correlation, but they're not formal. Um, what we need is a figure that gives us the exact magnitude of the relationship. If you have numerical data and you're not interested in the direction of the relationship, so for example, x explains, explains y, the Pearson-Bravais correlation coefficient is your friend. This correlation coefficient, also denoted, by the way, as uh, r, so the Pearson-Bravais correlation coefficient often, or the of most of the time it's called the Pearson correlation coefficient is denoted or n denoted by the letter R um, has a value or it gives you a value that goes between 1 and minus 1 okay so it will give you a value between 1 and minus 1 and um, the closer the correlation coefficient is to 1 the stronger, so the closer it is to 1, the stronger is the positive correlation between your two variables. The closer it gets to 0, so um, for example you have 1, then you might have a very strong, so a very strong, so plus plus 4, or plus plus 3, positive relationship, so it might look something like this if your uh, correlation coefficient is equal to 1, it might look something like this. If it is very close to 0, you'd, you'd have absolutely no correlation, so it might look something like this. 
and if your correlation coefficient is equal to minus one or the close it gets to minus one, you'd still have a very strong correlation, but it would be negative, so it would look something like this. A correlation coefficient of 0.5 might look something like this or minus 0.5 might look something like this. So this could be, um, this wouldn't be one, one would be a straight line, but this could be uh, 0.9 for example or minus 0.9. Now this would, mm, this might be 0.6 and 0.6. This might be 0.2 and 0.2, yeah, and this would be zero. Yeah? So um, this is the output you get for your correlation coefficient. Um, okay, so the pearson Barbe correlation coefficient is a fantastic tool if you only want to know whether there's a relationship between two numerical var variables. But be careful, if you have ordinal and or categorical data, um, for this type of data, you have different measures. Um, also, the pearson bravier correlation coefficient only checks whether there's a relationship between two variables in both ways. If you have an idea of the direction of the relationship, you'd have to use regression analyses. Um, but we'll cover that in a later video or later videos.